Hey, Julian Kraus here, and today I'm going to show you my audio post-processing workflow for Dialog in Adobe Audition. And I'm going to show you how I get great sounding and consistent audio with just a few clicks. My workflow is designed to be used with Dialog, so voice recordings for video or podcasts will work very nicely. First, I'll go quickly through my workflow to show you how fast it is, and then I'll go over each step in more detail and explain my settings. So here we go. Here I loaded a voiceover recording from a previous video, which I'm going to process. My first step is to apply an effects preset. Then I drop the audio file into the match volume panel and loudness normalize it. After that I apply a second effects preset. And that's it. That's my fast, simple and repeatable workflow, which will lead to a natural sound. And that's actually my whole philosophy. This workflow is designed to preserve the quality of the recording and doesn't overprocess it. So let's dive a bit into the details. After loading in the audio, the first thing I do is to load the first preset in the effects rack. The preset consists of two high pass filters. I use these filters to reduce any kind of low frequency rumble from my recordings and they simultaneously help to reduce plosives. The first high pass filter has a very steep slope and cuts off pretty much everything below 80 Hz. My voice and in fact many voices don't have any important frequency content below 100 Hz and this filter is still a bit below that. So this high pass doesn't change the sound of my voice at all, but it eliminates very low frequencies. I also recommend that when using the FFT effect, you get into the advanced section and set the FFT size to 8 or 16,000. Now I also got a second high pass filter and this is an 80 Hz filter with a slope of 6 decibels per octave. This filter is there to tame the proximity effect of my microphone a bit. When I'm going to record a voiceover, the mic is much closer compared to when I boom the microphone from above when I record video. To make these two recordings match a little bit better, I use this a subtle high pass filter to lower the bassiness in my voiceover recordings, which makes it less jarring when I intercut it with the boomed mic. So I only use the second high pass on my voiceovers where I have the mic close and I disable it when I process a boomed mic that is further away from me. Of course, if you like the accentuated bass due to the proximity effect on your voice, then you can simply neglect this second filter. By the way, there is a reason I use the FFT effect to do my high pass filtering instead of using the parametric EQ in Audition. This has to do with the phase shift that is caused by the parametric EQ effect, which can result in an asymmetric waveform. This asymmetric waveform can eat up some of your headroom later in the workflow, and that way the compressor has to compress your audio harder. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I think using the parametric equalizer or the FFT to do your high pass filtering are both valid options. I simply prefer the FFT effect. Okay, so that's the first step, applying the high pass filter. In the next step, I drag the file into the match volume panel and here I loudness normalize it to minus 25 LUFS for mono recordings or minus 22 LUFS for stereo recordings. Normally you would loudness normalize your audio at the very end to make sure that it is exported at the correct loudness. But there is a very big benefit in doing the loudness normalization at this point in the workflow, which I will go over in a second. So like I said, I simply hit run and this loudness normalizes the audio. After that I select my second preset, which has a compressor, a gate and an amplification effect in it. Let's go over my compressor settings. I don't want to use any makeup gain, so the gain is set to 0 dB. The ratio is set to 3 to 1, which I find to be a very nice compromise. The ratio is low enough so that the compression isn't obvious, but it is still high enough to effectively pull down the spikes in my audio. The attack time I have set to 1 millisecond. The reason for this fast attack is that I want to capture very sudden spikes in the audio. So the compressor is acting a bit like a gentle limiter, which even pulls down very fast transients. The release time is set to 100 milliseconds. 
This is arguably still pretty fast, but if you think about it, the human voice also produces pretty fast decaying transients. Words start and stop rapidly, and because I only want to pull down the high spikes in my audio, the compressor is set up to be fast enough to release between words. The ratio I have set to minus 12 dB, and this is set up so that the compressor just pulls down the big spikes in my audio. So the compressor does compress quite a bit of the audio, but it's not compressing everything constantly, only the louder parts. Now, normally you would have to set the threshold of the compressor individually for each voice recording, because you usually have different recording levels, and this changes the point at which you set your threshold. But here is where the loudness normalization comes in. Because I already loudness normalized the audio before, it is already at a known level. This way I don't have to touch the threshold of the compressor and can simply leave it set to the minus 12 decibels. This also means that you can simply copy these settings one to one and get the exact same results as I do. Next up I got a gate in the effects rack, and by the way the order of the effects does matter, so the compressor is at the top, then the gate and then the amplification effect. So the audio gets compressed first, then the gate is applied, and at the end the audio is amplified. The gate is a VST plugin called Regate, which is part of the free Replug plugin pack from Reaper. You can download this effect on their website. Now the gate has two purposes. First of all, it attenuates background noise in my recordings, and second of all, it also reduces my breaths. The pre-open, attack, Hold, Release and Hysteresis are all left at default, because these settings work very nicely for the human voice. The Quick Attack makes sure that the gate opens quickly when you speak, and the 100 milliseconds release close the gate in an unobtrusive way. One thing I changed though is the RMS size. I got it set to 1 millisecond, because if there is a really tiny spike in the background noise, I don't want to open the gate straight away, and this makes sure that the gate is a tiny bit more gentle. The next thing I changed is the wet and dry mix. At default, dry is set to minus infinity, and this doesn't let any sound through when the gate is closed. But this is very obvious and your audio can sound choppy, because you can hear the gate constantly opening and closing. A better way to do it is to set the wet and dry, for example, to minus 6 decibels. This way, once the gate closes, the audio is not cut off completely, but attenuated by 6 decibels. Depending on how heavy I want to attenuate my breaths and the background noise, I have different settings. I got one which only attenuates the audio when the gate is closed by 3 decibels, then I got one preset which attenuates the audio by 6 decibels, one more for 9 decibels, and even one with 12 decibels. I usually use the 6 or 9 decibels attenuation, but you can copy these wet and dry settings and choose the one which fits your needs. Lastly, I also set the threshold to a proper level. The way you would go about this is to go through your audio and find the loudest breaths. Check where they are peaking on average and add about 6 decibels. In the end, your threshold should be set relatively low, but still higher than your breaths, so they don't open the gate. I'm at minus 36 decibels, and this is a good starting point. I also want to point out that once you set this up, you don't have to touch your threshold again, because we used the loudness normalization earlier. So here again, we benefit from the loudness normalization before. And lastly, I use an amplification effect, which amplifies the audio by 6.5 decibels to bring it to its final loudness. I'm targeting minus 19 LUFS for mono recordings, and minus 16 LUFS for stereo files. Because we loudness normalized the mono file to minus 25 LUFS earlier, 6 decibels of amplification will bring it to its final loudness of minus 19 LUFS. But because I lose a tiny bit of loudness because of the compression, I have to add just a bit more amplification, which is why the amplification effect has a 6.5 decibels boost. So I apply the second effects preset and then I do my final check. I listen to the audio to make sure that everything is like it is supposed to be, and I also run the amplitude statistics tool to check with the true peak amplitude 
if there are any clipped samples. If so, I manually go in and pull them down. Of course, you could also use a limiter to do that, but I usually only have one or two places by the audio clips and I reduce the volume manually in these places. Finally, I have a look at the loudness reading in the amplitude statistics tool to double check that the audio is at its final loudness. With my workflow, I'm usually within less than a dB of my final loudness and I don't have to do anything else here. And here is some audio before and after processing it with my workflow. This is a very good value and this allows you to leave yourself a nice amount of headroom while recording without introducing any additional noise. This is a very good value and this allows you to leave yourself a nice amount of headroom while recording without introducing any additional noise. So that's my workflow. I have processed my voice recordings like this for quite some time now and it consistently gives me great sounding audio. Feel free to use this workflow yourself and keep in mind that none of my settings are set in stone, so change them to fit your needs. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing and check out my other videos about audio recording. We'll see you all in the next one.